What's up future respiratory therapist? In this video, we're gonna talk about difficult airway assessment. How, when you are preparing for an intubation procedure, can you assess your patient to potentially prepare you for a difficult intubation? Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're talking all about difficult airway assessment in this video. Before we jump into that, check out the Respiratory Coach website, respiratorycoach.com, where you can find a plethora of, 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 of video-based courses designed to aid you along your educational journey to assist you in passing the TMC and the CSE exam, as well as assisting you in, in, in various specific subjects, such as pharmacology or formulas, uh, or neonatal care, uh, whatever it is, uh, there's a course there and more to come. So please check out that website if you're looking for assistance along and during your educational journey. Now, we're talking about difficult airways in this video, and there are several tools that we can utilize to help us um, preemptively assess our patient to, to help us be more alert and aware to a potential, a potential difficult airway. This is gonna be very, very important when we are potentially going to be uh, performing uh, maybe a fibroxic bronchoscopy or most importantly, the intubation process. So um, Egan's uh, uh, chapter 22, uh, talks about the malampati classification is uh, one of the most used methods to identify individuals with potential difficult airways and this is what it looks like now I always have a tendency to want to say malampati but it's actually malampati score and the way we do this is we have our patient sitting up open their mouth as wide as they can protrude their tongue as far as they can without speaking. So this is, does not include any type of phonation or speaking. It's just open your mouth and stick out your tongue and you are going to look inside your patient's mouth. When you do so, you are going to observe what you see. Now, if you are looking over here and you can see the anatomy of the oral cavity in totality, meaning you can see the um, you can see the uh, fascial pillars, you can see the uvula, you can see the soft palate, and you can see the hard palate. Those are the four categories that you are looking for when assessing the Malampati score. If you can see all four of those components, then your patient has um, a um, Malampati score of one. Now, let's say that you perform this maneuver and you can see the hard palate and the soft palate and the uvula, but you can't see the pillars. Well, then that would be classified as a two. So you can see we've lost a component. The four components that we're looking for here are hard palate, soft palate, uvula, pillars. And, and if, if you can't see all four of those, then you have to ask yourself, okay, what's missing? So if the pillars are missing, but you can see the other three components, then you have a two. Now, we're going to draw a line right here because once we get past two, uh, uh, a, Malamp a Malampati score of three or four is associated with a more difficult airway. When we look at the three over here, we can see that we see the hard palate, we see the soft palate, and we see maybe the base of the uvula, but not the uvula in its entirety, and we cannot see the pillars. So we've lost now two components. This is now going to yield us a, a, a Malampati score of three, and then the, the uh, highest score is a four, and a four is indicative of, again, a difficult airway, potential difficult airway, and we see when we look here is all we can see is the hard palate. We've lost the soft palate, we've lost the uvula, and we've lost the pillars. So all we can see is the hard palate, and then we now know that this is a Malampati score of four, and, and we need to be considering and, and asking ourselves, what precautions do we need to take during this intubation process to, to ensure that this procedure goes as routine as possible? Um, a lot of times when you start getting these indications for a, a, a higher uh, Malampati score, and you see these indications of a difficult airways, you want to start asking yourself, should, should we um, maybe 
uh, consider a video assisted laryngoscopy, which a, a lot of evidence is saying that's the preferred method anyways. But in this situation, if you're thinking direct versus video assisted laryngoscopy, these three and four categories, we're going to be going video assisted laryngoscopy or maybe even uh, flexible bronchoscopy assisted intubation. And so we see where, where these are going to be more difficult airways than what we see with one and two. And that's the Malampati score. Now, I'm going to tell you, the Malampati score is not um, a solid independent predictor of a difficult airway. Actually, a study from, from uh, 2023 actually revealed that even with the implementation of the Malampati score, still over 90% of, of intubations were deemed difficult intubations uh, that were unanticipated. And so even with these precautions, you still always have to be on your toes because you never know when the intubation procedure is going to become a difficult process or not. Okay, so this is just a tool to help you preemptively prepare yourself for this is setting up like a difficult intubation. Now, another tool we can use is called the thyroid, men thyroid mental distance. This is oftentimes abbreviated to the TMD. So this is a thyroid mental distance. And what we see here is, is we're going from the, uh, the, th the protrusion of the thyroid cartilage up to the mentum. Now, the mentum is the tip of the chin. And so what we're looking for here is that this is a six centimeters. That's the mark we're looking for. Okay, and I know what you're thinking, like who's going to pull out a ruler and measure this? Well, maybe not, but I'm going to show you a shortcut here in just a second. What we know is, is that less than six centimeters um, of a TMD or a thyroid mental distance is associated with uh, a risk for potential intubation. The neck is shorter, the airway may be more anterior, and what we see is, is that this is uh, potentially going to be associated with a difficult uh, establishment of an artificial airway. Now, again, like I said, are you going to pull a ruler out and measure this? Likely not. But the rule of thumb is essentially you take three fingers and go from here to the chin. And if you can place three fingers like this in that place, and that's approximately six centimeters, and that is associated with your six centimeter rule. It's not a hard rule, but it's a general um, kind of a, a general approach that you can take to assessing this. So if you ever see somebody preparing for an intubation and they are assessing the patient and they take three fingers and put it underneath their chin like this and assess, then that's what they're doing. They are assessing the thyroid mental distance. They also are probably gonna look into their mouth. And what we find is, is that if you have a decreased thyroid mental distance and you have a, a malampati score of three or four, then now we have two data points that are suggesting difficult, potential difficult airway establishment. And so we're more prepared now because we have more than one predictor that is saying, you, this is likely going to be a difficult process. And so we, we, we stay, stay tuned that way. So this is one that we don't talk about a lot. Okay, uh, I, I would feel safe to say that the uh, Malampati score is, is definitely um, more heard of. But this thyroid mental distance is another tool. Now, these are just two tools. There's uh, other tools such as the Lemon score. Uh, we're not going to jump into that, but the Lemon score is uh, basically a combination of multiple data points, including thyroid mental distance and including Malampati score, including just observing and looking at your patient for any, um, any facial trauma. Any, any, any potential airway obstruction such as, such as uh, throat uh, cancer or uh, epiglottitis or, or just different things like that. So, so what we realize is, is that it's not just, oh, the patient, let's intubate this patient. There is a process of we need to intubate this patient. We need to establish an airway. Now, let's take everything into account that we can to be best prepared to be successful on the first attempt in the least amount of time with the least amount of trauma while we establish this artificial airway. And that's what these assessment tools are all about. Now, to summarize, um, I just want you to be familiar with the various tools used 
uh, to assess potential airways. As respiratory therapists, we're at the head of the bed. We're heavily involved in the intubation process, and we need to be familiar with these terms so that when uh, we are being asked or when they are happening, we are familiar with them. Or maybe we're the ones who initiate them. Maybe we go in and do an assessment. We need to intubate this patient. Hey, by the way, we've got signs of difficult airway based off of the TMD and the Mallon County classification. Um, always be prepared regardless of the assessment findings. I want to emphasize this right here. I'm not telling you that if you have a, a, a thyro mental distance that meets the three finger criteria and, and you have a malampati score of one, that it's going to be an easy intubation. That, that's, that's not what we're saying here because again, over 90% of intubation attempts that are become difficult were unanticipated. And so it does not, the, the, the lower scores does not mean it's not going to be difficult. It just is, a, is a, a predictor of if it's going to be or not. But you never know. Anytime you get into that airway and, and, and you start trying to place an artificial airway, you never know what you're going to find. You never know what's going to happen. You never know how difficult it's going to be. So we always have to be on our toes and ready ready, ready, ready for, for any and all obstacles that will come up regardless of what any of our predictor tools say. Think about this like weaning. We all know that, that during the weaning phase we do weaning parameters that are, that are used as predictors of liberation success or extubation success. But we also know that just because all of our weaning predictors say this person will successfully extubate doesn't mean that that person always successfully extubates. We always know that things happen and they don't go the way that our predicting or predictor tools might suggest. That's why we're there. So that, that, that we have our primary plan, our con contingency plans, and are ready to go for whatever happens along the process. So that's uh, two tools. That's the uh, Malin Patty and the uh, thyromental distance tools help to help you assess difficult airways potentially. Uh, I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay here with me on YouTube. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button, please. Leave me a comment and hit the like button. Uh, it helps me and motivates me to continue putting this content out for you to help you along your journey. Come find me on Instagram and TikTok at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis, and then don't forget respiratorycoach.com. Your resources, your resource for um, the tools that you're looking for to assist you along your educational journey as you become a registered respiratory therapist. Hey, remember at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.